I have a confession to make. I don't like doom metal. You need to leave. But I always try to keep an open mind and I expect the same from you all, so I thought I'd share 10 doom metal bands I do enjoy that maybe you will as well. And we're starting with Primitive Man. Now, I tend to like my metal fast, so I think for me, if the music is going to be half the speed, I need it to be twice as heavy to make up for it. Primitive Man, take that equation and multiply it by, like, a hundred. For my money, Ethan Lee McCarthy has one of the heaviest, most cavernous growls in metal. And when backed by the suffocating atmosphere and relentless waves of distortion, it's a truly punishing experience. <laughs> Definitely not the best entry point for those not as into the noisy and extreme end of the spectrum, but if you're a real masochist and you like it loud, this is what you want blasting through your speakers. That shit hurting! On a completely different note, we have Chemis. Also from Colorado, but on the other side of the spectrum, Chemist is a band for those who can appreciate the more epic and progressive side of metal. With imagery that is pure heavy metal, but lyrics filled with introspection and remorse. The vocals drift around you like fog over the mountaintops. And just when you've settled in, they'll hit you with sparing, but always perfectly placed death metal growls to shake things up. And rather than lingering too long in any particular riff, these guys bring enough pace changes and shifts in tone to keep things engaging from start to finish, even if they still take their time. It's slow. So slow. Next up, we have Doomed. Back to the Death Doom side of things, this relatively obscure German project maintains the usual foundations while also delivering some of the most infectious hooks I've ever heard in the genre. It's pretty rare that I even use that word to describe the guitar work of this style, but especially on 2015's Wrath Monolith, this guy knows how to craft and layer simple little melodies that really get under your skin and burrow deep into your hippocampus. I think our ruined silhouettes may be my personal favorite example. Furthermore, you can expect notes of everything from groovy chugs to pure funeral atmospheres, sometimes all within the same song. Highly underrated. I gotta sing the Doom song now! Doom, 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 doom. Next up is In the Company of Serpents. Denver must be a truly bleak and depressing place sometimes because we're circling back yet again for this sludgier take on the sound. I previously described this band as vagrant fireside sludge like Mastodon as written by Tom Waits and performed by Campfire under some filthy bridge. Guitarist and vocalist Grant Netzorg sounds like a world-weary hobo with his gravelly smoker's croon, bringing a certain hypnotic southern swagger to the riffs along the way. Two thousands Lux was great, but I'm partial to 2017's In Soft Hour, which the band describes as an exploration of personal discovery and evolution through the lens of cabalistic and hermetic thought. The melodies are soaked in Jack Daniels and caked in dirt, and I love every second of it. I don't like lotion. I like my hands to be cracked and callous like a railway worker. As long as we're pulling in other influences and really leaning into atmosphere, we have to talk about Dreadnought. <laughs> Dreadnought is an incredibly talented doom metal project that leans heavily into jazz influence, incorporating saxophone, piano, impressive drumming, flute, and of course Kelly Schilling and Lauren Vieira's stirring clean vocals to really take the listener to another plane. Over the years, I'd argue that they've increasingly pulled back on the heavier elements of their sound, but I think that Life Woven and especially Awake in Sacred Waves are the perfect balance.
These are truly stunning experiences that harness top tier performances in progressive and jazz, along with the perfect sprinkling of extreme doom. They're also from Colorado. But his whole place sucks. Back to more underground artists and one of my more recent picks, let's talk about Rise to the Sky. This is a Chilean project that reached out to me in 2021, but they've been dropping multiple albums a year since like 2019. And despite this output, somehow this also has some of the best production value of any group on this list. The amount of layers from the guitars to the strings to the diverse vocals, it's frankly quite breathtaking. And even when dabbling in funeral doom tropes that often put me to sleep, they always do so in a much more engaging way that is always changing and evolving. Not to mention frequently pulling at my heartstrings. No, I'm not crying. You're crying. Then we have Swallow the Sun. Inside. This Finnish group was a highly requested one when I asked about this topic on the community tab, and as someone who saw them open for Dark Tranquility a few years back, I can see why. Fortunately, that was also just before legendary angry keyboard player Alexi Munter left the band because he was an absolute pleasure to see live. In any case, their sound is, as Chris Dahlberg of MetalTrenches.com puts it, a balance of equal parts gloom and hopefulness. And as someone who deeply enjoys melodic death metal, I can appreciate how these influences also creep into their overall vibe. There's moments where I may as well just be listening to one of Dark Tranquility's moodier tracks. So I guess what I'm feeling is like a beautiful sadness. I guess that sounds stupid. Yeah. Y'all, we're not done yet, but if you're enjoying the video, hit that like button. And also, as we're going along, comment below your favorite doom metal bands that even maybe people who generally hate doom metal will enjoy. But next up, we have Mare Infinitum. Time for another more obscure project, this time from the Russian Federation. They shared their most recent release, Cryosleep, with me towards the end of last year, and goddamn, was I blown away. That title track is just incredible, the way the wind and mandolin slowly build into the ominous distortion, and then the strings and piano take hold alongside those soaring guitar leads, both operatic cleans and venomous death snarls in perfect harmony. <laughs> Once more, a progressive approach to songwriting makes for some really powerful results and huge climaxes. I'm so glad that Mare Infinitum put themselves on my radar, and I can't wait to hear what spacey interstellar doom they cook up next. That's one doomed space marine. Then we have Inter Arma. Honestly, Paradise Gallows is what I thought I would be hearing the first time I listened to Ahab. The sounds of the titular captain bellowing from the mast at the circling white beast below. And as much as I respect what that band does, this often highly aggressive seafaring storm is much more my speed. Tracks like an archer in the emptiness sound like a lumbering giant or kraken rising from the deep. They also aren't above shaking things up with some pretty relentless drumming, too. And honestly, this is a band that really just does whatever the hell they want to from track to track, with albums like Sulphur English taking you on quite the unpredictable journey. You can't tell me what to do. And then we have Trypticon. The actual genre of this band is hard to fully nail down and can vary from moment to moment, but I'd argue that Tom G. Warrior's transitional album to this sound with Celtic Frost's Monotheist did more to get me into doom metal than any other album. Why would you say something so controversial yet so brave? And the subsequent Eparsteris Demonis and Milana Casmata further deepen my love of music that sounds as if it's truly spiraling into hell. Yeah. 
Similar to what I said about Primitive Man, even, this stuff absolutely destroys me and just how heavy it gets with tracks like Abyss Within My Soul, Altar of Deceit, and Demon Pact. Stank Face for Days and the cover art from Tom's good friend H.R. Giger is fitting to the nihilistic aesthetic. Y'all check out this playlist for more great metal top 10 lists, and again, let me know down below what are your favorite doom metal albums for people who generally hate the genre, but that'll do it for now. Flight of Icarus signing off. I will see you in the trenches.